Good morning, everybody. Well, okay, maybe it's not morning uh, by the time you see this video, but it's morning here and uh, either good morning or hope you guys had a good morning. Anyways, uh, my name is Dustin Meyer and we're going to do, I think it's episode 13, uh, 13th uh, retouching video that we've got on the channel so far. Um, so, you know, as always, I like to mix it up a little bit. Now, yes, I know we're doing another headshots. Um, facial retouching session and uh, however you know I want to do one for guys and also in a previous video not the last one but a while back I uh, did a um, retouching segment uh, for an older female but this time we're gonna do a guy so anyways uh, we're just gonna jump right into it basically I've already done all color corrections and everything else in Lightroom uh, that's what I recommend because you have more control over colors and all that other stuff I know that Portrait Pro allows you to work directly on raw files however I'm pretty sure most of you guys know that Lightroom is going to give you a little bit more control so man my hair is all over the place <laughs> anyways uh, I'll just kinda like look at you from this side here um, so anyways, uh, I just went into the first step screen. Sometimes it will take you to the uh, split screen where it'll show you the original next to the one that's got the effects applied to it. However, like I've said before, I prefer to actually start in this window because you can adjust the outlines without it automatically applying the uh, filters, the you know skin softening and stuff, which makes it go a little bit quicker as far as resources on the computer. So for the most part, um, now one trick that I recommend is that you apply a good amount of sharpening in Lightroom before you import into Portrait Pro. And the reason for that is it just allows the software for Portrait Pro to find the edges of the faces and the facial features a lot easier. If your images are coming out soft, um, which I used to shoot wide open or maybe one third of a stop, you know, tighter than a, a wide open, um, you know, it's just, it's not sharp enough for you to, uh, for the software to be able to find the edges and everything else. So, um, I've started stopping down to sometimes, you know, I shoot a, a, a Nikon, let's see, it's a 24 to 70 F2.8, um, but I put in, I sometimes will stop it down to 3.5 or even F4, just, you know, depending. So anyway, so that helps. And then also, let's see, what was I going to say? I know I tend to ramble. Anyways, so I apply sharpening. Now, I can't remember the exact value numbers in Lightroom, but if you go to the details sliders, there's four of them. Uh, one, I believe, is uh, detail, then radius, then um, masking, and uh, de detail. Did I already say detail? So sharpening, radius, detail, and uh, masking. So I just take all four of them, whatever they're called, and just put them right in the middle of the slider. And I find that that is a good amount of realistic looking sharpening and slash detail. So anyways, moving on. All right, we're in the uh, first window where we're just going to go ahead and adjust the outlines. Now, the nice thing is that it's already, um, uh, you know, determine the gender and everything so that takes out a whole extra step if there's facial hair I just go ahead and adjust the outlines to uh, you know wherever the facial hair stops it's um, it's a little tricky you know just depending but you just kind of judge it with your eye and then you just click inside one of these windows here to go in now again you're just sort of guessing if there's like a mustache or something like that and, you know just kind of picture where it might be um, this is one of the things that I find is kind of important as far as making sure these outlines are correct because um, if you want to apply teeth whitening in Portrait Pro then it needs to know uh, where the lips stop and the teeth actually start and then let's see eyebrows look good eyes look good for the most part I usually don't have to mess with these sections because it does a pretty good part a uh, pretty good job of finding those so okay we're done boom and please wait while your picture is enhanced okay so I you can mouse over the before picture to remove the outlines and you can see uh, without any distractions you know what it looks like before versus what it looks like after for the most part I think it looks really good however you know we're just gonna kinda help it along here I'm gonna go into face sculpt controls and you know sometimes people just want something a little bit 
you know, more contoured looking, nothing too much because again, we want them to look the way they actually look in real life. Um, but sometimes, you know, depending on what focal length you use, that can cause lens distortion. And, you know, like barrel distortion is when you're zoomed in like really tight, like 70 millimeter or higher, which can kind of make the face. Let's see if I can do this. Um, so like here's the shape of my face. It almost kind of does like this, making the face look wider. Um, Whereas, you know, with a wide angle lens, it, it really kind of like almost smushes the face like this, kind of like what my um, <laughs> what my camera is doing right now. So let me adjust the brightness there. Sorry. OK, we're all photographers. Whoa. <laughs> OK, anyways, uh, we're all photographers here. Bam. OK, better. We're all photographers here. We're a little detail oriented. Anyways, moving on. So when it comes to facial sh or when it comes to shine, Let's see here. I'm going to bring this forward a little bit just to kind of help the neck along. Maybe raise the neck a little bit. Let's see. Lens correct. There we go. And again, this is just kind of, you know, doing what you feel looks, you know, natural. Again, you know, enhancement, but natural. That's that's my deal. So facial shine, we're going to go up just kind of removing some of the shinier spots. If you go too far with it, if you notice, it looks a bit more powdered. Uh, again, it takes away some of the, the, the dimensional quality of the face. So we kind of lose like the shape of the features and stuff if you go too far, because you do need just a little bit of highlights on the screen. But, you know, again, it's just based on what you, uh, you know, what your preference is. So like if I go all the way, then it almost takes away everything on the cheeks. I'm going to bring it back just a little bit. All right. Let's see for guys, you know, you don't really have to go too detailed with it. And then uh, spot removal. This makes my job a whole lot easier. We're going to go to about medium and see what that does. And we're going to go a little bit higher just to see like before and after. OK, so that also helps. It looks like it's helping to get rid of like some of the wrinkles up here. I'm going to turn it off. So you, wrinkles are a bit more. We still got a few freckles up here on the top and a little bit on the nose here. So let's turn it back on. There we go. And you know what? I think we could probably just go with uh, about five or six. So again, it's just to totally up to you. Boop, boop, ba -doo. Sometimes I bring the texture down because I feel like it brings in a little too much texture. Okay, so since we're since we're you know working on, I'm gonna do around the eyes a little bit, just so it's not too much of a distraction. There we go. All right, now I always zoom out just to kind of get an overworld view. That to me looks a little too powdered, so I'm gonna bring the shine back in just a little bit. So notice right here, it brings some of it back in, creates a bit more of that dimensional quality of the face. But at the same time, um, it's not so bad that it looks plastic. So I think we're good there. I might bring up around the eyes just a little bit more just to kind of help remove some of the, you know, kind of discoloration uh, that we get over the years from lack of sleep or, you know, from having kids, you know, I'm just kidding. Anyways, <laughs> so we're gonna leave it right about there. And let's see, already. And now we're going to go to skin lighting. Now, usually if you, you know, nail the lighting in the studio, um, you don't have to use this, but it's also really good, especially if you're outdoors or if you feel like the lighting might be a little too flat. So we're going to take a look here and just look before and after. I'm going to turn that on. I'm going to bring in the contrast, maybe just a tad. And that also kind of helps remove some of the powdered look too, if you have to go a little too strong with the skin, the skin smoothing. So that way uh, it doesn't, the, you know, the color and the contrast of the face isn't really flat. You know, it, it kind of brings back some of that contrast because as humans, you know, instinctively the first shape that we learn as an infant is the shape of the face. So it's eyes, nose, whoa, sorry, <laughs> mouth, and then jawline. But if you can't see defined lines with that, the face looks really flat, then for some reason, when we look at the picture like that, 
it just it doesn't click in our heads like oh, there's something wrong with that and because we're creating a two-dimensional illusion of a three-dimensional shape then we need to have that contrast have those outlines and stuff visible so that you know whenever we look at a photo we're like oh you know just something clicks in our head like oh that's a good picture or hey that that looks like the person that you know is in the photo which is obviously the most important thing with a headshot so let's see moving on here i know i talk a lot but makeup controls not needed because we're working on a dude eye controls i think that um you know we can go super bright which we don't want but just enough to where the eyes you know are recognizable let's see i might widen the eyes a little bit There we go. Just enough. See, I've got like really squinty sort of like pseudo Native American Asian kind of thing going on. So sometimes I'll use this on myself. Of course, that's except when I'm raising my eyebrows or whatever. Anyways, so um, I think that looks good. Now I will zoom in for uh, the mouth and nose controls because I want to see the effect of the whitening. Now over here, whoops. On the left side, where it has the before, you'll notice that the teeth are a, a little bit of yellow. You know, we all drink coffee in the morning, so, or some of us do, and, you know, sodas and whatnot throughout the day, so that, you know, kind of uh, yellows the teeth over time. So we're just going to go up a little bit more. Don't go too extreme with it, because if you do, it will not it'll just look it'll just look really fake you know you can crank up the eyes you can crank up the teeth and next thing you know you've got you know twilight so um, man that's an old joke okay and the other thing that I do also is I use the sharpened mouth slider because sometimes if you have to use the teeth whitening uh, sliders a little more than usual then they tend to lose contrast and also uh, it just looks like they have white plastic in their mouth like a solid thing of plastic um, so I bring this in just a little bit so that the um, the lines around the teeth that separate the teeth are, uh, don't disappear. And then you can also sharpen the teeth as well. And sometimes that'll do the trick. So we're going to bring sharpened mouth down, sharpen the teeth just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so far so good. I'm going to go into face sculpt controls and just double check there a lot of times uh, when uh, you're taking somebody's picture they tend to um, oh, what's the word they tend to uh, tuck the chin in their neck because it's like they're feel like they're about to get hit by a truck or something like that which is obviously not the case but it's just a natural thing that happens with um, you know being photographed so we're just gonna make sure that you know we can correct for that if that does happen and then head forward there we go and what that does is it kind of like keeps the jawline the same but it brings in the neck a little bit more so that helps and let's see just so that we have again the nice definitive jawline I like using that definitive word a lot hair controls I don't feel like it's necessary for guys but of course you can always you know go in and you know change it up a little bit it might add a little bit of coloration to it but I mean for the most part I think that you know we're we're good so yeah it didn't really purple hair no I'm just kidding this is the masking tool for those of you guys who haven't used this before Ta -da. so yeah obviously we don't necessarily need to use it so I'm just gonna turn that off <laughs> sorry sometimes I like to have a little fun skin coloration let's see how much it fix it fix it fixed <laughs> um, the cheeks were a little bit of rosy, but, uh, you know, just from, um, you know, sun damage, stuff like that. Like I've got a lot of it, if you can't tell, plus the lights that I'm using right now are kind of a bit more tungsten-y compared to the lights behind me. So that's why my face looks super orange. Yeah, Dustin, that's, um, yeah, that that's what it is. <laughs> Anyways, so skin coloring controls, uh, I think that looks good. Mainly what we're looking for, uh, you know, with the skin smoothing and skin coloration is we want to make sure that it's a bit more of an even skin tone so that there is nothing too distracting. Um, no. Let's see here. Oh, my tan tanning slider is down a little bit. I think that's a nice, healthy look. So, all right. So we're going to zoom in again just to check. 
Now, I know sometimes it's hard to tell on YouTube when you're watching these on the TV, on the TV, on the screen or your phone or whatever. It is harder to see detail and whatnot. So I'm going to do one to one. Hopefully that'll help you guys out. So uh, there are texture packs that are built in that help maintain texture so that it's not lost when you do the facial shine. Um, you know, again, kind of preventing the whole plastic thing. This area down here to me looks good. Uh, that way, you know, again, when we apply softening and whatnot, it's not, um, you know, it's not again, super smooth. Now, the last thing I want to do is I want to go in and do some quick touch ups for any spots that might have gotten missed. And I just kind of use like up here, you know, adjust the size as needed. I put the strength, you know, uh, kind of manageable. Again, just judging by the eye. That way you just do just a little bit at a time. It's not like, oh, Jesus, you know. Sorry, Jesus. And then just go through. And then, you know, whenever I do this, I make sure that um, I might go in and just clear that up a little bit too. That'll also help kind of remove any excessive shine. But once I'm done looking at most of the spots that I think I've got, sometimes I zoom out just to kind of get a good general overall view. See, now I kind of see just a few more up here. Um, for me, it is important to make sure that, you know, we don't overdo it. You know, that we kind of get trapped in that whole, you know, spot healing you know, spiral where we just go, go, go. And all of a sudden, you know, hours and hours go by because the whole point of this is to just, you know, get it done, get it looking good. Okay. So I'm going to zoom in. What do you guys think? There is the before we got the after. I think it looks really good. We've got good skin tone. We've got good contrast on the face. Not too much, not, you know, too little. We've got some good, you know, amount of dimension. Uh, we also have, you know, a good amount of, you know, softening of the wrinkles. But again, we don't want to get rid of them too much, especially with guys. You know, we want them to look manly. And if we make it too smooth or whatever, it just doesn't work. So uh, we've still got a little bit of highlights on the face. Uh, just you know, because we don't want to take away too much of that. The teeth look really good. We did a little bit of contouring for face sculpting. So just kind of like, you know, almost make it look like the muscles in the jaw aren't contracted because that's what happens when we smile too much. Or we grit our teeth, you know, the cheeks get real big. Um, so this kind of helps smooth everything out. And I don't know. I, I feel it looks natural. I feel it looks really good. Um, so, and I like using this software because again, it's just real quick. And of course this is, you know, it takes me longer when I do these videos because I want you guys to see the process that I use. However, you know, if I'm just doing this and I'm not talking and blabbing on like I am, this will go really, really quick. Um, I can't give you like a specific amount of time that it takes, but it's a fraction of the amount that it would take me to do like in Lightroom or in Photoshop. Um, so, so yeah. Uh, so tell me what you guys think. Uh, again, I know it's kind of hard to see like the amount of detail and stuff on, uh, on YouTube to see the screens and whatnot, uh, as far as like, you know, if it's too smooth or too soft, but I think it looks really good. Tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. Also, I'm kind of liking doing, uh, a, you know, a video, uh, Every other time I do like a retouching job because I mean, hey, you know, kill two birds with one stone. Um, I like sharing what I've learned. So, um, cause I didn't learn it all by myself. So anyways, um, if you want to see more, you can subscribe. Uh, if you learned something today, give it a like, I'd appreciate it. Otherwise we will see you next time.